Hello class. Today we're going to learn how to copy and bisect angles. So what is an angle? You probably think of a pointy thing, something you use degrees with. Well, here's the actual textbook definition. So when you put two rays together that have the same endpoint that don't form a line. So here we have ray BA right? and we have ray BC. Put them together and we get angle ABC. What's the interior and the exterior of an angle? What do you think that is? Well, according to the definition, I'll show you in a moment, we're basically looking at the side of BA that contains C. So looking at this side over here in yellow. And you want to see where that crosses the side of BC that contains A. So where do these cross? Where are the highlighters turning red? That's the interior. That's the textbook definition of interior. All you have to remember is that it's the inside part. It's, it's the smaller one. It's the one that you think would be the interior. And, oh, I'm sorry. Uh, so, yeah, so the exterior is just the part that's not the interior, everything outside the angle. Bisector, what's bisect mean? Well, bi means how many? Two. And sect, cut. You know, in sections, cut it. So cut in two sections that are the same size. And you denote that with angles by using a little arc. So if you have one arc on each of these, that means they're the same. If we had different angles that were congruent, we could show that with uh, two arcs. Uh, you'll see that in a different lesson. And so OC, right, OC cuts this angle so that we get two congruent ones, so it's a bisector. And some geometry assumptions we have to make. We talk about an angle measurement. We're talking about a number between uh, 0 and 180 and degrees. To do that with a protractor to measure it, you take the center of your protractor and put it on the vertex of your angle. And you have to line up one side of it, one of the zeros, with one of the sides of your angle. And so when we're measuring angles, we're always going to start with that zero. So in this case, we're going to read it from the inside of the protractor. So we go from zero over to where we see the other side of the angle, and that's 140. So the measure of angle AOB is 140 degrees. And this is just saying you can add angles together. Uh, if you have two angles next to each other, uh, say adjacent, that have the same vertex, and them together get the bigger angle. So it's 2 plus 47, 99. And this is saying that if you have uh, angles that form a line, then they add up to 180 degrees, their measurements. So let's get to the uh, important part of this, really important part, bisecting an angle. Make sure you have this in your notes, along with some steps that you can put in your own words. So to bisect an angle, the well, first thing you got to do is draw an angle. And label the vertex. I'm going to call it A. You're going to draw a circle. And it can have any radius. I, I say not too big, not too small. Um, if you make it too big, it's going to miss your angle. You need it to touch your angle at least two times. So, and then draw your circle. And now we have two intersection points. Let's call them B and C. All right, so now we want to figure out how we can get a bisector that will make it so we get two congruent angles. So the way to accomplish that is using circles because of their equidistant properties. So I'm going to use a different color here. Let's make this uh, blue. Now what we're going to do is we're going to put the pivot on one of your intersection points and open it up so that the pencil touches the other point of intersection. And you're going to draw a circle there. Now, keeping the compass the same size, it's very important that you don't change the size right now. You're going to move it over to the other intersection, point C, and do the same thing. And we want to know where do those second two circles cross. Well, they cross in two places. Let's pick the one that's on the interior. So we have D. And now if we connect A to D and draw a ray, we have ourselves a bisector. We can verify that with a protractor. We should have two angles that measure the same. 
I put the protractor on the center here. It looks like we have angle CAD is, is that six, uh, just over 60 degrees. And it looks like that the whole thing is just about 120. So this other half is 60 as well. And here are the textbook steps on doing this. You can you should put them in your own words. Say it in a way that makes sense to you. So when you study it, you understand it. So can we bisect anything else? Yeah, we could, uh, we could cut a segment in half, right? And I'm sorry, that, so the answer to the question is no, because um, yeah, so, you could also have segments. And so how do you know if you can bisect something? Well, you want so both halves have the same size. So that means that you got to be able to flip it over onto itself, right? Kind of like a reflection. So if something can be bisected, there's a line of reflection uh, so that it maps onto itself. So why would we want to do this? Well, here's a carpentry application. If you want to cut nice 45 degree angles onto the corner of a few pieces of wood for a picture frame, you might need a protractor. You can do that precisely using the method that we just learned about. So another, the other really big point here is copying an angle. Uh, to do this, we have to uh, have a space to copy it onto. So draw your angle, I will mine B. And we're going to copy that, let's copy it down here, onto this array EG. Now, that you can use whatever letters you want. Um, you usually just want to plan it out so that you have, you know, uh, letters in order together, like A, B, C, and then keep, like, you know, D, E, F together over here or something. But it doesn't really matter. It's just convention. So we're going to start off the same way. You're going to, after you uh, have this started, you're going to draw a circle over at B. Same thing I said before. Make a circle not too big, not too small. And let's label our intersections. Let's call them A and C. Now we want to copy it, so we're going to do a very similar thing down here. We're going to go put it at E. We're going to our vertex and draw a circle. And now we have this point over here. Let's call it F. OK. So. Uh, we got to figure out where do we put our other point. You know, we know that the ray is going to go through some point on here, but where precisely? Well, we have to measure basically how big is our angle. To do that with the compass, we put the pivot on C here, and you open it up so that your pencil touches A, the two points of intersection. This is basically just measuring how, how big it is. You can draw a circle there. We want to do the same thing down here. So put the pointy pivot on F and draw your circle. And you notice we have two points of intersection. Pick the one so that it looks like the other picture. So I'm going to pick D to be this one up here. It wouldn't be wrong if you picked the other one. It just wouldn't look exactly the same. And then we're going to connect our vertex here, E, to D. And these angles should be congruent. So to check that, I'm going to lay this one on top of the other one. So I put this right on top of it. It should line up. Oh, I'm a little bit off. That means I made a tiny mistake. Let's try and fix that. All right, so I double checked. I had my, uh, my pivot was a little bit off at one point. So now these line up a lot nicer. Uh, you know, like I said, it doesn't have to be perfect. You're, you're, these are constructions are prone to, to minor mistakes if you're off by just a little bit, and that's okay. You're not going to lose points for that. As long as it more or less looks like the same angle, that's that's fine. Just because you're off by a few degrees doesn't mean you did an incorrect process. And so here are the steps. Put them in your own words. And before we're done with this lesson, let's uh, talk about some other important words. Right, here's a midpoint. 
in the point that's uh, in the middle of the segment, basically. Now, uh, what is a degree? You know, we, we've talked about degrees and angles, but what's that actually mean? Well, it's when you take a circle and you split it up into 360 pieces. Now, why 360? No, no one knows exactly why. Uh, one, one common thought is that in ancient times, they realized that there were just about 360 days in a year. And uh, that was an easy number for them to work with. So that's one thought. The Babylonians used a, a base 60 method, and uh, 60 times 6 is uh, 360. So those, those are two prevailing thoughts on that. And two things. We said that when we have an angle, that the two rays aren't collinear. In the case that they are collinear, they're called the zero angle or a straight angle. So those are special cases. So in this lesson, we learned how to copy and how to bisect angles. Thanks for watching the video.